Bill Analyst joining us now as well. Danny, good morning. Um, good morning. Your reaction, you just pulled up a chair here when you heard this news. Your reaction to what we're hearing that the special counsel's office now has arrested um, Roger Stone. These are all charges that flow from the investigation, the false statements, the obstruction of justice, and the witness tampering. And I haven't had the chance to look at this indictment yet. It's just breaking. But I can assume there are all things that post-date the Mueller investigation. In other words, investigators came to Roger Stone and he allegedly told them false statements. He obstructed justice un under any of a number of obstruction statutes and he may have persuaded another witness to give false testimony. What you can expect from the Trump side is going to be that this is entirely a product of the special counsel investigation. These are crimes that were created by the investigation once the DOJ and U.S. attorneys parsed over these statements and found anything false in them that they could. That's what I expect to be the Trump and Roger Stone defense to these charges. And it's an interesting thing because that indictment, it'll be interesting to see whether it contains any charges that predate the Mueller investigation. That's something the Trump team will seize upon. Well, Danny, this is in the indictment right at the top. During the summer of 2016, Stone spoke to senior Trump campaign officials about Organization One and information it might have had that would be damaging to the Clinton campaign. So this is connecting Roger Stone to Organization One, which I have, I'm only scanning through this, but I speculate that that's probably WikiLeaks and Trump's senior campaign <laughs> officials. So this is a link between WikiLeaks, the hack, and Trump campaign officials. And isn't that fascinating because it's another example of what we call speaking indictments. Indictments just need to be a bare bones recitation of facts, just enough to get over that probable cause hump. So when you see this level of detail, this is the Mueller team, this is the DOJ, the U.S. attorneys who are indicting these characters. It's their opportunity to speak in the event that this report that we're all waiting on never sees the light of day. They will chronicle what they did through their indictments. And you'll notice that, and I'm expecting that the indictment doesn't charge any actual conduct in 2016, but rather the lying about or the obstruction of justice when that conduct was later investigated by the Mueller team. Again, I haven't had an opportunity to see this breaking news indictment, but I expect that's what we're going to see. Danny, this has been rumored for a while. Uh, as you watch Mueller put the pieces together, why Stone today versus a month ago versus a month from now? That's something, that's a strategic decision by the special counsel's office. You mean why, why today? today? It's, I'm not saying today or yet, but right now, in other words, this could have happened a month ago. This could have happened two months ago. As you see him put the pieces together, is there anything that jumps out that, ah, this is happening now because? Most likely, the Mueller team is choosing to indict when they do in order to keep things confidential right up until the last possible minute. There must be some strategic decision in indicting Roger Stone now when they could have, as you said, exactly, indicted him months ago. Uh, but perhaps if they had, it would make public these facts and it might scare off other targets, other witnesses, and other subjects in the investigation. That's something that the DOJ and the U.S. attorneys must keep in mind when investigating to only release this information when they absolutely have to, in other words, in, in, in the event they might scare off other individuals. Julie Ainsley, I'm looking through this uh, indictment as you are as well. What else are you seeing as you read it? So first, I just want to correct one thing that I said about his affiliation with the campaign. He was an official of the campaign up until August of 2015. That would be over a year before the election. But then he, it says that he maintained close contact. What's important to me, I think, is the the fact that they want to show his relationship with the campaign and especially right here when you go down to paragraph five stone was contacted by senior trump campaign officials to inquire about future releases by organization one that can be assumed to be wikileaks the fact that he was contacted by trump campaign officials suggests that Mueller has been using stone just as we thought he was to find out the coordination between the trump campaign and wikileaks it's spelled out here okay and and i'm looking here at the I'm looking, Danny, just as I read through this, we've got one count of obstruction, one count of witness tampering, five counts of making false statements. Um, Roger Stone has been sort of dismissive of his role in all this. If you look back to his public comments, interviews he's done, things he said publicly and said, oh, you know, my texts were late night ravings or, you know, I was not working in any official capacity for the campaign. I was just talking to buddies. Will that fly with Robert Mueller? 
No, it won't, because it doesn't matter who, he, for what side he was working for or who he was speaking on behalf of. If investigators showed up at his door and he gave them anything other than what they believed to be the truth, right there they've got him on Section 1001, the false statement statute. There are so many other obstruction statutes, uh, I have to see what the actual facts alleged are. But as for witness tampering, that just requires corruptly persuading or attempting to persuade another witness to give false testimony testimony or false statements. So that is a very low bar. And they can look at all of his texts, all of his email, and even we have heard about some of these emails and texts of him talking to other individuals who may be persuaded to give that testimony. Based on what we've heard reported to date, these charges shouldn't come as a surprise, especially the false statements and the witness tampering. But one person they come as a surprise to will be Roger Stone. In December, uh, in an interview with the Washington Post, he said, I don't think any reasonable attorney who looks at it will conclude that I committed perjury, which requires intent and materiality. Mm. And so it'll be really surprising to see how he responds to all of this, in part because he was very concerned. So he was nervous for, yeah. He was so back and forth and you could never decide if he was playing a long con or if he really was completely in the middle of it. And that's kind of been the mystery of how Roger Stone's public presentation has played out during this entire time. I'm just struck by some of the language and color that is coming out in this indictment. You know, you have person one who is the intermediary with Stone and he's writing him in August 2016. Word is friend and embassy plans two more dumps, one shortly after back second in October impact plan to be very damaging and then referred to um, would not hurt quote to start suggesting HRC old memory bad has stroke neither he nor she well and Donnie this speaks to the kind of people who are around especially in the early days of the president's campaign these were buddies these were friends people he'd known mm -hmm. Roger Stone oh he worked in politics bring those kind of people in and now he's, the president's reaping a little bit of what he sows as we have an arrest and a big indictment from the special counsel of Roger Stone. You know, if, if you think to who were the people who were emotionally very connected to him during the campaign, Robert, it was Manafort. It was this guy. This was, this was a guy who, I'm not going to say he was his Roy Cohn because obviously he wasn't functioning in yeah. capacity, but kind of his like real kind of nasty little uh, weasel out there, moving, jiving, cooking. And uh, the interesting thing to see now, as, as the pieces start to, uh, start to fall, what does Mr. Stone have to give up to save his hide? I mean, that is obviously, it's not uh, the arrest. It, what I mean, what uh, happens in the room now with Mueller? Yeah, and, and Danny, I'm looking at a recent tweet from the president where he quotes Roger Stone as saying, I will never testify against Trump, the president wrote. This statement was recently made by Roger Stone, essentially stating he will not be forced by a rogue and out-of-control prosecutor to make up lies and stories about President Trump. Nice to know that some people still have guts. Um, Until well, you stare that, at you. That may change <laughs> as of this morning. That may absolutely change. What we're seeing, false statements, is a classic charge brought by justice, brought by U.S. attorneys when they want to force a witness into compliance. Even the toughest witnesses sometimes wither in front of some of these federal sentencing guidelines, which can be really, really nasty. I have to tell you personally, they can be incredibly harsh. Defendants generally would much rather be in state court than in federal court. And Section 1001, the false statement statute, is a classic used by prosecutors, federal prosecutors, in order to, I won't say compel, but certainly sweeten the pot and encourage a defendant to reconsider his position on not testifying. And if you want evidence for this, just look at all the organized crime uh, uh, cases in which even the toughest hitmen, even, who said, I would never testify against my brethren, they get right up there on the stand and they testify. I just think the president knows that if you look at his relationship with Roger Stone throughout the campaign, they were on and off again and disputing their relationship with one another. And then other times we found out that Stone actually was working with the campaign. And so to have confidence that Stone is going to be faithful uh, to him, especially in the shadows of everything with Michael Cohen, just wouldn't be wise. Well, and we should all remember Roger Stone's ultimate contribution to the Donald Trump campaign in Iowa so that Donald Trump could have a line that he could remember and embrace. He encouraged him to talk about build the wall and talk about it in construction terms. And it went over well at an Iowa event. And here working? we are today. Here we are. are today. Julia Ainsley, what else you got on this? 
Just a few more things I'm teasing out as we go. Um, it seems that person two, I would assume, is Randy Credico because it talks about a radio host who he mm. is talking with, and we know that Roger Stone exchanged text messages with Randy Credico. Another thing, we're talking about the false statements. It seems part of this is him lying to the House a Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. So Mueller is able to charge for false statements, not just to his own agents, but to people on the Hill as well. We know that, as you see there from that footage, Capitol Hill has been very interested, Congress, as they They've done investigations into WikiLeaks, into this role. Um, again, just over and over again, the contacts between the campaign and Stone are just kind of beat through in this indictment. And I think that that is, is really key to where we go from here, that this was not Roger Stone acting as a rogue actor and then offering this up to the campaign as a gift to try to ingratiate himself. It was the campaign reaching out to him, mm. saying, what do you have next? And it, it talks about in here when they're trying to set up a secure line, knowing that what they're going to be discussing isn't something that they would want to be recorded or heard. Yeah, Rick Tyler, if you start to read through this indictment from the special counsel's office, it becomes pretty clear that Roger Stone can't just be dismissed as some kind of a freelancer or a mercenary, that there are contacts and requests from the campaign to Roger Stone. It's still unclear to me, Willie, whether uh, Randy Credico actually had access to WikiLeaks and he was supposedly passing those off to, to Roger Stone. Uh, that has yet to be proven. That may be true. I'm sure that Robert Mueller's office uh, knows that to be true or not to be true. Uh, but let's let's go back. Who is Roger Stone? Roger Stone, like Donald Trump, is a political con man whose showman shtick has finally caught up with him. He's a professional prevaricator. It shouldn't be surprising to anyone that he's now been indicted uh, for perjury. He is a practitioner in the dark arts of uh, of the political dark arts. He's known for uh, dirty tricks, uh, and I think a lifetime of this shtick has finally caught up with him. All right, we're going to continue to cover this breaking story that's just come across to us again, the special counsel indictment and the arrest of Roger Stone. We'll be right back on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.